Attention please, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching, yes, the Yankees Entertainment and Sports Network. how it ended last night a chopper to Glaber Torres and right there the Yankees celebrate being American League East Division champions the celebration was on and why not it's a long journey and this is one major step and in the clubhouse there was a major celebration as they felt good about what they've done of course the requisite picture on the field they'll save that and hope that they've got a couple more under their sleeve and it's time now for baseball as the yes network presents new york yankees baseball it's the new york yankees against the blue jays and the rubber game of a three game set from rogers center in toronto hello everybody and welcome to yankees baseball along with david Cohn and paul o'neill i'm michael k what a long strange trip it's been for the new york yankees to the top of the american league east let's take a look at some of the uh, ups and downs the ups well that certainly happened early 61 and 23 that was their record on july 8th they had a 15 and a half game lead in the east but then it got a little sketchy 18 and 31 really in a two-month period 16 and 5 though since september 4th they clinched the al east last night oh yeah aaron judge still at 60 home run so you get that out of the way Yankees know that they do not play in the first round and in the second round of the playoffs they'll have home field so what did it mean clinching last night well it means a lot I think every year we get a reminder that it's a long season it's a marathon the Yankees actually probably built up so much equity early in the season that they were able to withstand that sort of August face plant and then rewrite the ship and get it going and cruise on home at the end. They deserve to celebrate. American League East is a big deal. All right, so Paul, what do they have to work on as they work toward the playoffs? Well, there's some question marks, no doubt about it. The bullpen still a question mark. There's some injuries on the shelf. You hope to be a better team going into the playoffs than you are right now. DJ LeMay, Hugh Benintendi, is Aaron Hicks going to be an outfielder? Is Cabrera going to be out there? So there are some things uh, that Aaron Boone is going to have to study, come down these last uh, you know seven or eight games, and know what he's got going into the playoffs. All right, let's take a look at the pitching matchup in this one because this is important for the Yankees moving forward as well. Mitch White is going to go for the Blue Jays. And for the Yankees, it's Garrett Cole. Last seven games have been all about home runs for Aaron Judge. It's really all about home runs for Cole, too. It really is. And he's talked about it. He's going back to the drawing board, trying to figure it out. His stuff is all there. When you take a, the proverbial look under the hood at all of his pitches, they're all there except for once or twice a game, especially over the last couple of starts. That happens. And the ball leaves the ballpark. And something about when it gets up in the air, it doesn't get caught. And so he's got three straight starts where he's given up multiple home runs, actually seven over the three starts. And then when you don't get a call and you think you made the pitch and then this happens right after it, the frustration's going to boil over. And I think that's what we're seeing with Garrett Cole here. A little bit of misplaced anger going on right there. It's getting to him a little bit and understandable. I've been there, done that. I know what he's feeling right now, but he's going to figure it out. His stuff is too good. He is four strikeouts away from tying Ron Gidry for the single season strikeout leader for the Yankees. So he should be able to do that with a decent outing tonight. Well, there's more milestones in front of us as well. The biggest one is Aaron Judge is trying. He's gone homerless in seven straight games, still sitting on 60, trying to tie Roger Maris and then go ahead. Don't worry, you don't have time to wait because he's leading off in the first. Stay tuned. That's next on Yes. the lineup with Boone but he didn't bring out the lineup he gave it to his lieutenant Glaber Torres not starting tonight and Torres brought it out to the umpires laughs in the Yankee dugout big smile by Glaber at home plate as uh, he gets a little bit of being top dog had a great game last night well this guy's looking to have a great game Aaron Judge he has gone seven straight games without hitting a home run now the last time he went seven straight games without hitting a home run well that was in april and then in the eighth game he hit two home runs and then eight home runs in his next 10 games so can he repeat that we shall see as he strides to the plate to start this game and for those tuning in 
from around the country. Welcome to the Yes Network and our coverage of the Yankees and Aaron Judge's pursuit of history. The Yankees coming at 95 and 59. The Blue Jays are 87 and 68. And here's Judge. Judge starting his 48th straight game. He was asked if he wanted the day off today by Aaron Boone, and he said, nope, I want to play. So he is playing. Mitch White on the mound. And the right-hander deals. Inside, 1-0, and we're underway. All of Judge's numbers are great despite not hitting the home runs in seven straight. The 1-0. 2-0. Oh. Oh. In fact, his on-base percentage during that time, 17 of 31 plate appearances he's reached. That's 548. So he's not slumping, he's just not hitting homers. And the 2-0. 2-1. Oh. Mitch White, 27 years old. Since August 1st, he has the second worst ERA in the American League, 7.39. Brad Keller of Kansas City, 8.40. Cameras are ready. Judge is ready. And the 2-1. 2-2. Two -one. Two and two. Every single Yankee rooting for Judge. He is the unofficial leader of this team. They want to see him get this home run. And the 2-2. Two -two. Three and two. Brian Onora is the home plate umpire. Trip Gibson at first, Laz Diaz at second, Ryan Wills is over at third. Five plate appearances yesterday, all full counts. First one today. Full count. He had four walks yesterday. And the 3 2. That's ball four, so Judge walks again. Let's give you the entire Yankee lineup brought to you by TikTok. TikTok taught me. You just saw Judge walk. He's at DH tonight. Oswaldo Cabrera at second, Josh Donaldson at third. Oswald Peraza, the shortstop, cleans up. Harrison Bader in center. Marwin Gonzalez at first. Kyle Higashioka will catch. Tim LaCastro in right field. Aaron Hicks in left. And that is the lineup. That is the lineup after a champagne celebration or a lineup against the Blue Jays, maybe in Dunedin. More! <laughs> Like, you know, Coney, as you say that, I heard an ESPN that Stephen A. Smith, Michael, I'm sure that you heard it. He really called out the Toronto pitching staff. I, I thought it was actually hilarious. He said, I'm 53 or 54 years old, and I haven't pitched since Pop Warner, and I could walk Aaron's Judge four times. <laughs> I loved it. Oh, O'Neill's fired up, Paulie. He really is. <laughs> One one on Cabrera. Well, Judge's uh, on base percentage is soaring, and his batting average is about staying the same. So his triple crown initiative certainly has not taken a step back with all these walks. Two and one. You know, in the Blue Jays' defense and Mitch White, they need this game. You know, they're playing to stay where they are and. Make sure their playoff spot is secure, and not only their playoff spot, but having a better record than the two below them. Three and one, so having trouble throwing strikes to Cabrera as well. Having words with first base coach Travis Chapman. Being held there by... Vlad Guerrero. Two pretty good players right there. Three and two. On the season, Mitch White started out with the Dodgers in the National League, came over here in the trade deadline with the Blue Jays, and it hasn't gone that well 
so far. Well, let's check out the pitcher scouting report brought to you by Northwell. Coming in cold, he's 0-4 with a 7-3 ADRA, and his last seven games started. His slider's pretty good. You know, we saw a couple to judge there. He's got good vertical and horizontal movement, and curveball to lefties as well. Now, Paul, let, let me rebut both you and Stephen A. <laughs> he had five three-two counts. I mean, how is that not pitching to him? So there's at least two strikes in every single at bat. Well, can't just lay it in there for him. No, but you can challenge people. I mean, I see it both ways. I, I see it what Coney said. These guys were fighting for a wild card, but I also see a little pride at a, to the point where, you know, I'm going to prove to myself that I can get Aaron Judge out. And if you see the pitches he's walking on, they're usually off speed, change up, something that they want to try to get him to swing outside the strike zone now on the flip side Paul let me ask you this the Yankees have clinched they're not catching the Astros for the best record would it be the worst thing in the world for judge to expand the strike zone and try to hit a pitch two inches off the plate yeah I, I, that's just something you can't do overnight I, I think as a hitter you're so locked in and he has been so good at not you know leaving the strike zone as you see Cabrera also walk that uh, you know the last thing you want to do is start just wailing away at everything because it, then you can get yourself in a mess. Well there's no defense for walks but we'll give you the defense anyway brought to you by your local Tri-State GMC dealers. We spell defense with a C because that's what they do up here. Tapia, Bradley Jr. and Hernandez in the outfield left to right. Infield, Chapman, Bichette, Merrifield and Guerrero. That's third to first. Jansen's behind the plate. White's on the mound and he was just joined there by Pete Walker the pitching coach wanted a quick word after two batters. Paul, it's time for the keys to the game, brought to you by your local Kia dealers. Well, coming down the stretch, you want to get Garrett Cole going. I mean, he is your ace. He has not pitched well lately. A couple good games to end the season would certainly help. And answer the questions. We kind of went over it. I mean, Aaron Boone has some questions in the bullpen, questions in left field. you got to answer the questions about the injuries, on who you're going to have on the roster. And it's about me. Uh, this really, I mean, you can't look away from it now if you're Aaron Judge. I mean, you, you've brought this team to a title. Now it's about the Triple Crown. And that might be hard for Aaron Judge, just playing and worrying about what he does and not what the team does. Line drive, it's a base hit to right center field by Donaldson. Judge rounds third. He'll score easily. Going to third is Cabrera. It's an RBI single for Donaldson, and the Yankees lead 1-0. You know, baseball is an amazing game. If you remember last night, Josh Donaldson just, just did not look comfortable at the plate. Numerous strikeouts. Comes up today in a big situation in the first inning and just hammers one to right field. Aaron Judge does what all leadoff to hitters do. Coney just work the count, score the first run. Table setter. Yeah. Here is the rookie Peraza. Line drive, it's a base hit in the hole on the left side. That'll score Cabrera. Donaldson stops at second, and Peraza picks up an RBI, his first in the big leagues, and the Yankees lead 2 0. Well, Mike, jokingly, as you went over the defense, you see, you know, can not defend walks, and this is what happens. You walk a couple guys, you give guys opportunities. You see this little slider kind of hang right there. Ball finds a hole. All of a sudden, you're down two to nothing without an out. You know, Peraza got off to a slow start this year, but he really picked it up before he got called up, and you can see Rizzo managing today, fired up about it. <laughs> Bader fouls it back. You know, Conan, I got that managerial job from Joe Torrey. We had clinched down in Tampa, and he called me in the office, and he said, you know, you're the manager today. You're going to make all the calls. I said, great. He said, now the bad news. I said, well, all right, what's the bad news? He's like, well, you can't use Mariano. Jeter's not playing. Tino's not playing. I'm like, well, this is real fair, Skip. I got half a lineup to go out and try to win a game. It didn't work out too well for me. There's one on the first, not in time on the return. So one away as Donaldson moves to third. Now look at Rizzo, he's wearing the watch just like Aaron Boone wears. 
I don't know if that's the, the style that Aaron wears. But as the acting manager, he, he's got to know what time it is, Meredith. And Michael, it's pretty funny. Aaron Boone typically sits in the same seat on the bus to and from the ballpark. Well, Rizzo tried to get in that seat because he is, in fact, the acting manager right now. So they're having some fun with it. Aaron Boone said before the game, and he's maybe just going to take a little bit of a step back and let him do his, do his thing. But as far as pitching changes are concerned, Aaron Boone will still be making those decisions. Here's Marwin Gonzalez, first and third, one out. You could see that, you know, he helped make out the lineup, but he must have, like, wanted Peraza bat in cleanup because he was really happy when Peraza got that hit. You know, that's a good pickup, Michael, because he was a little over-exuberant there, so you may be onto something. <laughs> and Aaron Boone told me no disagreements with the lineup. They talked about it for a while last night. They were both on the same page, so they seem to be in lockstep. Now, Paul, let's see if he pulls a Pete Rose later and actually sends himself up the pinch hit or a Frank Robinson. That's right. A little player manager action. I feel pretty good right now about getting this ribby in. Just put myself in. Gonna have to take the watch off, though. It's glad to hear Meredith in the background there, all dried out from last night from the locker room celebration. Paul, it only took two showers to get all the champagne and beer out of my hair. <laughs> Very nice. Part of the gig. Gonzalez batting six, playing first base. Yankees lead 2-0, first and third. One man out here in the first inning. High fly ball, right field. Hernandez comes on to make the catch. Tagging is Donaldson. Here he comes. And the throw came into second. So a sack fly for Gonzalez, and it's 3-0 X. Everybody. Again, you beat that double play out if you're Vader, and it gives somebody an opportunity to easily uh, drive in a run. Love the poncho, Meredith. <laughs> it's been a while, Michael. It's been a, it's been a while since we've had uh, clubhouse celebrations with the pandemic. So it was nice to be back. And you see, Glaber took the fireman hat from the relievers who were supposed to have the fireman hat. He didn't even know how he got it. Said somebody put it on my head. Here's Higashioka. He had a career high tying three hits in yesterday's game. Labor also had three hits. Now he's the bench coach. He's wearing a watch too. Must be the thing. Studying the stats too. All over it. You know what the watch is all about. What? Tell us quick. Sponsorship. <laughs> Looking for some coins. I get a freebie. Yes. <laughs> three runs, two on hits. <laughs> One man left. Yankees three and the Blue Jays coming to bat. Let's check out the Blue Jay lineup. He's going to face. Brought to you by TikTok. TikTok taught me. Springer, the DH, leads off. Then Bichette at short. Blood Guerrero at first. Hey, Oscar Hernandez plays right and cleans up. Matt Chapman plays third. Rymel Tapia in left field. Danny Jansen will catch. Whit Merrifield plays second and bats eighth. And Jackie Bradley Jr., an excellent defensive center fielder, will bat ninth. Garrett Cole towing the slab up here at Rogers Center in Toronto. 32nd start of the year he post up. He's durable. All the numbers are great, except for that bottom one. Let's check out the pitcher scouting report brought to you by Northwell. Well, the franchise record is in sight. Ron Guidry's got 248 Ks for a single season record. He's four away from tying it. The fly balls and home runs, he's got a 13.4% home run to fly ball rate. That is far and away the, the largest, highest number in the big leagues. Major League average about 8.4. I'll get a little bit more into that as we get on. And then getting lined up for game one. He's your game one starter. Needs to get things right, feel good about it. Got time to do it. And the dangerous George Springer leads off. He had a leadoff home run in the first against Tyone yesterday. And there's a strike.
Blue Jays magic number to clinch a playoff spot not necessarily the first one but just to get in is two. So any combination of Blue Jay wins and Oriole losses would get the Blue Jays in for sure. The Rays magic number is three. The Mariners magic number is five. The Orioles on the outside looking in they have a high magic number of 13 so they're going to need a lot of help and the Yankees will meet the Orioles Friday Saturday and Sunday at the stadium. Foul back and out of play. Yankee defense brought to you by your local Tri-State GMC dealers. Hicks, Bader, and LeCastro in the outfield. Good speed left to right. Donaldson, Peraza, Cabrera, and Gonzalez third to first. Nick Ashioka making his second straight start, catching Garrett Cole. Two and two. Hit shortly right to Donaldson with the strong throw to first and a nice stretch and scoop by Marlin one away. Laura Gonzalez with the scoop has to impress the manager. Mr. Rizzo over there is used to doing this. That was a bullet to Donaldson. Short hop. Boy, Donaldson could play some third. All year long. Here's Bichette. Want to know? It's kind of the funny part is, is you know when Gio Urshela was the Yankee third base, and we all thought, man, he's really good at third, and he was, but the metrics didn't like him as much as they like Donaldson. Grounded up the middle, Peraza. Two way. Particular going to the left. You know, when you're doing your judging range defensively, left and right is a big deal. It's one of the reasons why the Yankees love Peraza at shortstop. He's a true shortstop up and through in the minor leagues, and he really moves well out there, including coming in on balls and serious arm strength. Aaron Judge due up in the second inning. That's the beauty of being the leadoff batter. Eight, nine, and one. That's going to bring up Guerrero. Now Guerrero hit a ball to left field that he just looked at and styled, ended up getting thrown out at second. And uh, the Blue Jay manager John Snyder addressed it and said unacceptable. And I am going to talk to him. So let's see what kind of effect it has. One on one. It's just so much more pronounced when you get thrown out on the bases than it is if you hit a routine fly ball and you don't run it down to first base. Big difference. One and two. In the dirt, two and two. One of the things Garrett Cole did very well in his last start and that he's continuing to try to do, including here in the first inning, is combination of knuckle curves and sliders as his secondary pitches. He thinks they both work well off of each other. <laughs> Strike three. Guerrero down looking. One, two, three, and for Garrett Cole. We go to the second. Aaron Judge coming up again. Baltimore, when they start their last home series of the regular season, 
and you can watch the action on Prime Video, Yankees on the Yes Network. Now, coverage begins at 6.30, which you can have and watch here on Yes or live by streaming through Prime Video. Here's Tim LaCastro. So it will be simulcasted on Yes, and Prime Video will do the broadcast. You can see it on the stream, Prime Video, or you could watch it on Yes. One and one. LaCastro playing a, for a spot on the postseason roster. That guy off the bench. That could steal a base. He steals bases in his career at an 88.6% success rate. 39 out of 44 this year. He's 8 for 10. Terrence Gore has won three World Series rings doing that. And, you know, hardly hits, but they send him in for a big steal. And you know how valuable it is? Just look at 2004 with Dave Roberts. 2-2. Line to base hit. Through the left side, past the diving Bichette. LaCastro with a leadoff single. Just looks like White. Uh, every time he, a ball is put in play, Coney has got to find a hole. And uh, you know as well as I do, there's years like that as hitters and there's years like that as pitchers and uh, it's just uh, the way the ball lands. Here's Aaron Hicks last seven games eight hits in 22 at bats that's 364 you see what he's done overall. And a strike. To your point, Paul, Mitch White now in his last 22 or last 16 to 17 innings pitch now has given up 24 earned runs. So it's been a tough stretch for him over the last four starts. <laughs> one and one. Kind of the last piece of the puzzle for this Blue Jays team. They have great offenses. We've talked about the first two games of the series, but the de overall depth of their pitching staff. Manoa's great at the top. So, you know, we saw Gosman. He's had a quality year as well. Stripling actually has had a decent year as a starter. Romano at the end, a good closer. It's just kind of they need a couple more pitchers. Well, they've been disappointed by Barrios. They thought he'd be better. They thought he'd be a top of the rotation guy. And by Kikuchi. Signed to a free agent contract, and he's been demoted to the bullpen. So they thought they had the pieces, but it hasn't worked out. Yes. The Castro leads held by Guerrero. Did he go? Yep, one and two. I tell you what if I was Aaron Hicks I would be in that manager's office every single day just saying you know I need I want these games I want to prove to you that uh, you know I can help you in the postseason. Uh, these are bigger games uh, most guys are, are trying to stay locked in trying to you know just keep in shape where Aaron Hicks is is trying to salvage a spot to, 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 to help this team in the postseason. Yankees lead 3 0. We're in the second. Runner on first, nobody out. Lined into center field on the run. Bradley Jr. is going to dunk in in front of him. Moving with Castro to second. Another hit for Hicks. First and second, nobody out. That'll bring up Judge. Well, the umpire. Gets the new baseballs. Now, for those tuning in from around the country, 
to see Aaron Judge's at bat. We welcome you to the Yes Network. Yankees lead this one 3 0. Top of the second inning. Judge walked to start off the game and came around to score. He had four walks yesterday, so five walks in a row for Judge. Five 3 2 counts, actually, six 3 2 counts in a row as well. So he has runners on first and second and nobody out as he sits on 60 home runs. Swing and a miss. Swings through the slider. Ball clearly outside. I think that Aaron Judge is starting to see that he needs a hit early in the count because as it gets deeper, he sees more slop off the plate. The 0 1. Fly ball right field. Hernandez for the first out. Throw comes into the second baseman, Merrifield. I think it's kind of a facetious crowd right here, just to show, you know, just, just to watch him swing the bat and be able to make contact that the, the Blue Jays actually threw him strikes. The judge actually had a decent pitch to hit, just underneath it a little bit. But again, that swing, you're not going to forget it after the year that he's had. So Laz Diaz had to check to see if White still had one of the Aaron Judge balls. He did not. You saw White talking there to Jansen. And in talking to Roger Clemens the other day, he said the speed up rules next year, he said the thing that would really disrupt him is when the batter was doing all of his preening, walking up to the, uh, you know, the walk-up song, he said, I would be mouthing what I want to do to the catcher. He said, now he's got to be in the box right away. That line of communication is absolutely gone next year. But Roger usually called his own game, the whole game. There's other ways to do it. And the signals you could use, Al Leiter used to use the swipe method. Jimmy Key, great Blue Jay and Yankee pitcher, mm -hmm. used to swipe on his uniform with his glove in order to add or subtract which pitch he wanted to throw one and two on Cabrera In the center field, that's going to be another base hit, but bad base running by Hicks. The throw to second, they get the four, so it is not a hit for Cabrera. That's a fielder's choice. Hicks thought that Bradley was going to make the catch and was heading back to first. Yeah, that's a horrible read for Aaron Hicks, and I, if you're Cabrera, this happened one time in my career. A line drive, and Wade Boggs kind of froze and got thrown out at second. Very frustrating as a hitter. And you line a ball to the center field and get nothing for it. And Cabrera did show a little frustration at first. Hits a big. You don't want hits taken away. So that scored a fielder's choice 8-4. It was Donaldson. 0-1. Did he hold up? And here's Cabrera. And there's some frustration by the rookie. And Hicks isn't happy with himself. And he did not hold up, so the count 0-2 on Donaldson.
Swing and a miss. Donaldson down on strikes. No runs, two hits, and two left. We're going to the bottom of the second inning. This is brought to you in part by Amtrak. Book your next trip in the Northeast early and save up to 50%. Go to Amtrak.com to book your next adventure today. By Cadillac, there's no better time to be in the Cadillac. Visit the Tri-State Cadillac dealer today. By the New York Lottery, get out there and play. And by G2 by Pilot, help me to write the next chapter in New York Yankees history. Some of the players that have worn both uniforms in this rivalry. Right now, the Yankees are leading 3 0, bottom of the second inning in the rubber game of this three game set. It'll be the middle third of the order for the Blue Jays, starting with Teoscar Hernandez. We have so many um, fans that watch our games down in Florida, uh, particularly in the Tampa St. Pete area. Tampa, the Yankees train at George M. Steinbrenner Field. So all of us here at the Yes Network sending out good thoughts and best wishes to people that are under the siege of the hurricane right now and uh, sending out prayers that everything goes well. And I, uh, I know that the Yankees, there's a ground ball to Marwin Gonzalez, flips over to Cole. They are using George M. Steinbrenner Field as a place where all the Yankee minor leaguers that are down in Tampa can stay and use as refuge during the hurricane. Well said, Michael. Yes, our hearts go out to all the people down in Florida suffering right now and dealing with it. And some of the pictures coming out of Florida are pretty scary. There's Matt Chapman. Well, the major league average of runs scored on home runs, just a smidge under 40%, it's 39.9. Coming into this game, Garrett Cole allows 69.3% of the runs he allows via the home run. And it just speaks to how great major league baseball hitters are because he's giving up home runs on 99 100 mile an hour fastballs that just or maybe two or three inches off where he wants them to be David they are and he's trying to figure it out you know I, I mentioned before as he gets another strikeout right there and moves closer to the gator here are the home runs he's allowed on Statcast 3d by Google Cloud and on what pitches There's some hunting of the fastball, and that's what he's talked about. Hitters are hunting me, and what he means by that is that hitters do go up there and sit on fastballs and cheat and start their swing a little early. Garrett Cole's a four-seam pitcher. He challenges a lot of hitters. Well, I mentioned fly balls and home runs in our scouting report, and his rate at 13.4%. Of all fly balls he gives up, that's how many leave the ballpark, 13.4%. Major League average is about 8.4% across the board. So what gives? What does that number mean? You know, that, that's sort of a number that, with a larger sample size, tends to kind of even out. It stabilizes over a longer period of time, and it can fluctuate. It can be subject to random variance at times. Not every fly ball you give up should leave the park at that sort of a rate. So is, are they mistakes? Is some of it random variants, combination of both? I think it's probably a combination of both. I think that number tends to stabilize over a larger period of time. But no doubt he's second guessing himself about pitch selection. In particular, the Verdugo home run in his last start. Swing and a miss. And Tapia goes down on strikes. He's one away. From Ron Guidry's single season Yankee record of 248 strikeouts. Well, it's time for Pinstripe Pride, brought to you by Toyota, the official hybrid vehicles of the Yankees. And tonight's picture was submitted by Joe and Christina. They are raising their son, Blake, to be the biggest Yankees fan in the Bronx. Blake looks like he's ready. Use the hashtag 
Toyota Pinstripe Pride mention yes in pictures you post to social media to reflect your love for the Bronx Bombers. We might spotlight you in a future game. There's Oswald Peraza, RBI single in the first. One and one. You know, we talked about the big celebration that the Yankees had in the clubhouse after the game. That one's driven out to right field. Hernandez is there to make the play. And one thing that they did, I think that is so great, is that a couple of them got on a phone and FaceTimed Michael King to bring him into the celebration and tell him how much he meant to what this team has done. Because we told you at the start of the, uh, the game with a great start they got off to, and a lot of that was Michael King, David. Yeah, it really was. Had a breakout year going, so that is a great story and shows how much these guys care about each other. Bader fouls it off. It really is a close knit team. They've been through a lot. We talked about it in our open the struggles through August. All the injuries. That's led from the top. Aaron Judge, Aaron Boone as well. Bader with a high fly ball to left center. Bradley puts it away, two down. Thought the best shots last night, and we had some great, great camera angles and shots of the dugout afterwards were the emotion of Aaron Boone and the coaching staff in particular, all of them in kind of a group hug, how much it means to the staff, how hard they've worked, up and down, the coaching staff, on the baseball side, the analytic staff, the guys that are here, they all deserve a lot of credit. They've all worked extremely hard. Really proud moment for them. You know, the outside world doesn't see. A game could start at 7, and most of those guys are here at 12 or 1 o'clock, and the, the amount of work they put into interpreting all the information they have to get to the players, it's a workload. It's not an easy job at all. It used to amaze me right when I got to New York, uh, you know, the, the, the time that Buck Showalter, uh, you know, he was so prepared as a manager, would get to the field. I mean, it was 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That's, that's basically the norm now. I mean, guys are there early, studying, analytics, everything, just to try to gain an edge. Well, here's the emotional Aaron Boone after the final out last night. Big hugs for the coaching staff, and then as a group, there's nothing like a group hug. We all love group hugs. There they did it. Well, come out to Yankee Stadium this Friday, September 30th, for the final home series of the 2022 regular season from one of the hottest promotional giveaways. It's Garrett Cole Bobblehead Night. First 18,000 guests in attendance receive a Garrett Cole bobblehead, courtesy of T-Mobile. Tickets are going fast, so get yours today at yankees.com. One away from Louisiana Lightning. Gidry set the Yankees' single-season strikeout record in 1978, ringing up 248. Cole has three tonight, one away. Ground it. Foul. Now, I, I would like to add some nuance to that. A record is a record, but strikeouts are far easier to get now and more accepted than they were in Gidry's day. So I almost think Gidry's 248 might be closer to 300 now. It's an excellent point. I mean, when you compare generations, certainly you adjust for the period of time. Popped up. Cabrera makes the play. He is really going to that knuckle curve tonight, Coney. A lot of breaking balls. But you know when we were talking last inning, and then he got a quick out about the pitch type, and we were showing where the home runs were giving up. And, and a lot of those balls, when I looked at that graphic, were, were location problems. They were mostly in the middle of the plate. I mean, there was only a couple of them that were on the corners. So, you know, you never want to pitch away from your fastball, Coney. I mean, you can emphasize that when you throw 98, 99, but you still have to locate. Yeah, that, that is a great point. And the thing about Garrett Cole's style is, is that he has a really low walk rate. He always has. His strikeout mm -hmm. to walk uh, 
rate really among among the elite of his era. Lots of strikeouts and not a lot of walks, so that's going to lead to getting more of the plate and challenging more hitters, and sometimes the home runs are, are going to happen. One and two. You know, I talked to Alex Cora, the manager of the Red Sox, after Garrett Cole's last start against the Red Sox, and he was surprised that there weren't more pitches like we just saw. He's leaving some meat on the bone at the top of the strike zone. When you throw as hard as he does, going up the ladder is an important part of it. Grounded to third, Donaldson. Two away here in the third. You know, if you look at that, Coney, that's what I noticed on the on the home run. I mean, look, uh, the inside corner one, but everything else is kind of middle. A few up, but uh, you know. It, there's a location issue there. It's not velocity or anything else. There's just a lot of balls that are hitting a lot of plate. Yeah, they're certainly bunched up in the middle of the strike zone, most of them. Jackie Bradley Jr. takes inside 1-0. Popped up. Donaldson gives it a look. That's about 10 rows back. You know, Paulie, one thing that you know as well as anybody, and certainly every Yankee player is looking for that signature moment in postseason play. Garrett Cole's opportunity is coming. He really hasn't had that as a Yankee. And that's why he signed to come to the Yankees, that he'd get more opportunities to have those right. signature moments in postseason. Grounded to Gonzalez. He backhands, flips to Cole. And nine up, nine down for the Yankee right-hander. We play three in Toronto, and it's 3 nothing Yanks. All right, heads up, everybody. A quick programming note for you. On Friday, Yankees will face Baltimore when they start their last home series of the regular season, and you could watch the action on Prime Video Yankees on the Yes Network. Coverage begins at 6.30, which you can watch here on Yes or live by streaming through Prime Video. So quickly, game will be on Prime Video and it'll be simulcast on the Yes Network, so you can enjoy it either way. Well, the manager having a talk with Cabrera about that lost hit, I think. As Higashioka takes a strike as we start the fourth inning. Now, a lot of people defending the, um, the value of, of Cole's strikeouts compared to Guidry's because they're saying, well, well, Gidry was allowed to pitch eight or nine innings every time he pitched. And pitchers today aren't allowed to go that long. But that, I don't think, is applicable to Cole. Cole goes as long as he can go. He, he's, the, he's the horse of the Yankee staff. But I definitely see their point as they retire Higashioka. It's really about the rate, the rate stat, and compared to the league average of the era. What was happening in 1978 when Gator was doing his thing and what's happening here in 2022 all these years later what the norm is you know, pinstripe alley one of the one of the great blogs that I follow uh, with the Yankees great writers on that uh, came up with a good number according to fan graphs that Gators rate of strikeouts was 98 percent above league average in 1978. Coles this year is 47% above league average. Both really good numbers, but that's how you put errors into context. What was the league average then? How much better than, than the league average was Gator, and how much better than league average is Garrett Cole? It's just another way to sort of you know, put context in, to it. And it also tells you how impressive what Gidry did was because 44 years later, that record still stands, and the yeah. Yankees have had some really great pitchers over that time. 
Yeah, just received a text and in 78 Gidry threw 280 pitches or innings and cold this year you know is, is under 200 so that's a that point, is a too. big big that's a big big difference. Well one thing I think we can all agree on it's much more accepted to strike out now because you're trying to hit home runs and yet if you strike out 200 times well that's price of doing business. Mm -hmm. Yeah that's you know you have the counting stats the actual number that add up to a certain number and then the rate stats that give you sort of a flavor for what happened in each each era. That's what makes Aaron Judge's season this year so impressive in an era where offense is down he's having a historic season. La Castro fouls it back still one and two. La Castro single in his first at bat. And White deals. Check swing, foul back. Well, either LaCastro or Hicks has to get on in order to give Aaron Judge an at bat here on the fourth inning. The Yankees go down in order. You have to wait till the fifth. The Gator 18 strikeout game. Just if you, if you go, go to YouTube and just watch it. Just phenomenal game. It kind of started the rally, the strikeout rally with two strikes, the mm -hmm. chanting. Two and two. Gator throw a slider down and in on righties, Paulie, and they take a full swing and try to get their kneecap out of the way. <laughs> He'd kneecap That's you on a full to swing. Do. Yes. <laughs> that one is ripped into left center field. That is going to be trouble, and it is in there and over the wall for a double. Well, if there's one guy that has a disadvantage with the ball bouncing over the fence, it's Le Castro because this ball goes off the top of the wall with his speed. He got a chance for a possible triple, but an easy double. Basketball got by him time before up in the strike zone, not that time. Le Castro lines it in the left center field. Here's Aaron Hicks. He singled his first time up. The impressive part about LaCastro is we saw him when he first came over to the Yankees have a tremendous injury to his ACL. Blew out his ACL. Has come back, worked hard, and really not lost a step. Mm -hmm. Still almost as fast as he was. Hard to do when you, you blow out your ACL. He's trying to make a catch down the left field line at Yankee Stadium and ran into that wall. And it was serious, but uh, he rehabbed, and uh, as David said, doesn't seem like he's lost a step. Still elite speed. The things that can be done with injuries now, uh, I'm sure that Joe Namath the thinking, why, why don't they have these surgeries when I played? <laughs> Two and one on Hicks. Didn't name it do the commercial with the pantyhose? Was yes, that Joe? He, yes, yeah. he did. <laughs> There's something about him that uh, every time you have him on your show, Michael, I, I, I just I st still stand there like starstruck and listen because I grew up watching him and watching him win that big Super Bowl. I mean, that, that there's something about his personality. It just kind of draws you to him. And he has that uh, still I believe he's 75 years old he has that sparkle in his eyes like he's in on the joke and he's had quite the life. <laughs> and was uh, reportedly a very good baseball player in high school could have gone that route. I think he chose the right sport for him. Three and two.
Another nice crowd here at Rogers Center. And a walk to Hicks. Kind of an Andrew McCutcheon flip of the bat on that walk. And that'll bring up Judge. And that'll bring out Pete Walker. I think if you're Aaron Hicks, you realize how much that means, you know, to, to, to get that walk, to get on first base. And now the possibility that, you know, they have to throw strikes to Aaron Judge here. So that's a big at bat. Third walk by White. And that'll bring up Judge. And for those tuning in from around the country to watch Aaron Judge's at bat, welcome to the Yes Network. Top of the fourth inning. Yankees lead the Blue Jays 3 0. It has been 33 plate appearances since Aaron Judge hit home run number 60, tying Babe Ruth, a record that Ruth set in 1927. Now taking aim at 61. Roger Maris did that in 1961. And the pitch. Goes with a breaking ball, slider inside, 1 0. Judge walked and scored in the first, fly ball to medium right in the second. That one gets away from Jansen, and the runners move up. Well, Cabrera's on deck. A 2-0 count on Judge. What does Schneider do? It's almost like Aaron Judge was waving them on and then looking at Hicks. Maybe stay at first. Give me a swing here. Well, the infield is back on the left side. Mitch White sets. And the 2-0. Hits shortly to third. They check the runner back. The throw to first, they get Judge. And LaCastro stays put. If you're white, you've got to feel like, you know what, I gave you a sinker, I came after you, Judge hit it hard, just got it on the ground. I Listen agree. Sound. Yes, he, he went after him. Give Mitch White credit. And that is going to be the last batter that Mitch White will face with Cabrera coming up. They are going to go to uh, Trevor Richards. So Mitch White keeps Judge in the ballpark with three plate appearances. Richards will face Cabrera with runners on second and third and two men out. Yankees up 3 nothing. Let's check out the T-Mobile coverage cam. We were all over the celebration last night, and then we got this, the Bam Bam dance. Pretty impressive. Now, he's had a lot of practice because he was the batting coach for three San Francisco Giants World Series wins, so... Probably where he really tightened that dance up. Were you impressed with that, Meredith? It's the first time I saw it, Michael. And we're going to have to do a full <laughs> breakdown on either the BP show or the pregame show here towards the end of the season. Wow. I think you'd look good doing that, Michael. What do you think? And Colin, the hot dog in the clubhouse as well, wearing a hot dog suit. All kinds of things happening last night. Wow. You know, it, it's really weird to see a dance, and, and I couldn't, I, I don't know what he's dancing to. I, I, I need to know the tune, Meredith. What What are we dancing to? I don't know if he knew what he was dancing to. I think he was just dancing. <laughs> I'll find out more. I'll do, a, I'll, I'll do a little work on that, Paul. Drill deep to right field. That ball is foul into the second deck. Thank you. 
Michael, he was one of the highlights in the uh, clubhouse last night as Waldo Cabrera really just soaking it in, one of those first-time guys experiencing it. Ron Marinaccio, another one. I spoke to him in the clubhouse today, and he grew up a Yankees fan. And he said it was better than he dreamed of. Owen oh 2 And there's a ground ball to Merrifield. Over to Guerrero, and that'll do it as Richards gets out of trouble. No runs to hit. And two men left. We're going to the bottom of the fourth inning. Three nothing, Yanks. Welcome back. It's time for tonight's injury report brought to you by Montefiore Einstein, state of the art healthcare in New York City, Westchester, and the Hudson Valley. DJ LeMahieu, who has been on the IL since September 8th with toe inflammation, was out on the field earlier today going through a full batting practice. Aaron Boone said Friday is the day that they are going to give it a go. So it looks like DJ LeMahieu will be activated. They should know pretty quickly whether or not he feels like he could be a productive player, see how he responds after playing. That'll be a big part of it, too. Uh, but certainly a guy that could help this team in the postseason if he's right. Be interesting to see how he performs because before he went on the IL, he was struggling. And they say he's not going to be right until he rests all winter. Springer, fly ball right field. LaCastro toward the line and foul territory makes the play, showing great closing speed to retire Springer. We talked about that speed, Paulie, and you've uh, you've covered some ground in this ballpark and made that play. There's a little bit of room over there. Yeah, there is. And you know the weird thing about it, Coney, is that track is not dirt. It's actually AstroTurf, so you don't feel any difference uh, as an outfielder getting close to the wall or to the stands in foul territory. So uh, there's really no warning that you feel as an outfielder. So the warning track is just a different color, Paul. It's not a different consistency. Yeah, it's a, it's the same turf. It's just yeah, actually just a different color. So a lot of times, you know, you're you're running and all of a sudden you feel that hard dirt. You know you're getting close. Well, you don't get that feeling uh, the, in Toronto because it's nothing more than just brown astroturf turf instead of dirt. Chop. Marwin Gonzalez fires to Cole. Two away here in the fourth. Now that'll bring up Guerrero. Take a look at a really good matchup here tonight. Drops a, a hook on him, just misses down. Once again, gets the call up. That's what I like it. Up and out of the zone, then another hook down. Four seamers up, hooks down, and then you paint away. Gets Vladimir Guerrero Jr. looking for something else. And, So here is Guerrero Jr. He struck out looking in the first, as you just saw. Want to know? One one on Guerrero. Two one from Cole. I like that pitch too, Paulie, right there. To me, that's a purpose pitch. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not really a knockdown pitch, but it lets Guerrero Jr. know that I'm going to come in there hard. Make him move his hands just a little bit. Two and two. I'll tell you the pitch I hated, Coney, was the pitch that once you come up and in, then it, to me in my head it was you were setting up the next pitch away. 
It was the guys that would come back in for a strike that would absolutely freeze me as a hitter. Yeah, doubling up in. Very effective. 2-2. Two -two. You didn't know that when you were pitching against him, did you? Not really, because he owned me, that guy, O'Neal. <laughs> Just... I like that ball away. I would hit Coney early. I knew that he had a slider and would come in late. But if I could put the ball in play early, it was usually out, out over the plate a little bit. There you go. One, two, three inning. And it's 12 in a row retired by Cole. Acuna Jr., two home runs last night. Atlanta and the Mets now tied in the uh, NL East, including tonight seven games remaining for both, three against each other. St. Louis Cardinals, they've been red hot. In one third of the season, and Jordan Alvarez exited last night with an ankle injury. X rays negative. Such an important player for the Astros. Marwan Gonzalez recorded the final out of the fourth. 12 up, 12 down for Cole. And there's a strike to Donaldson as we start the fifth inning. Donaldson one for two RBI single in the first struck out in the second. Richards deals outside. One and two. Way inside. Richards, 29 years old, fifth big league season. Been with the Marlins, the Rays, in 2021. Three teams the Rays, Milwaukee, and Toronto. And just Toronto this year. Started with the Marlins, but he says he likes relieving. Swing and a miss. Donaldson down on strikes on the changeup. This is Richard's best it pitch. It always has been. That really good changeup. Thrown well. You see how much it just dives down and in on righties. I mean, that's a lot of movement for a changeup. So here's Peraza. One and oh. So our good buddy Cameron Maybin tweeting out in between innings how much he likes Oswald Peraza, really touting him as loving his skill set. Going to be a good player. He's a true short. He's a true shortstop. He's got. He's very athletic there with a really strong arm. And manager Rizzo must like him offensively because he has a batting cleanup. And he did pick up his first RBI of his career in the first inning. And you can tell by his swing that he's going to have a little more power than uh, a lot of people think. I mean, you, look, you like Cabrera as far as the way he puts the ball in play. But Peraza down the road, Coney, I, I think that you're, you're going to see him being able to hit the ball in the seats. You know, that's what he showed in AAA, too, this year. Almost 20 home run potential, really, along with speed. Mm -hmm. Three and two. Close, but it did miss. Swing and a miss. Got the fastball by him, two away. Back to it. Nothing. No doubt. A lot of plate. Just got it by him. Looked like Peraza was in protect mode there. Maybe protected against a breaking ball. So here's Bader. 
Bader seemed as if he was having a blast in the uh, the post game celebration last night. Came over to the Yankees in a deal, just starting to play, but certainly has seen the highs and the lows as they struggled, and he's been accepted very quickly into that room. This brings back good memories, right, David? <laughs> what do you mean from that last Coney night? At, <laughs> that was, that was Coney at Hemingway's last <laughs> night. Did you go to Hemingway last night? I did. <laughs> Had a great time with our staff, among others. Paul, I was going to go and got back to the room and saw the bed, and it just looked more attractive than Hemingway's. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's, ne that's never crossed your mind, has it, Coney? Coney doesn't even look at the bed. In case it looks good, he just heads right out the door. When I got off the elevator, I said to David, I, I might see you there, and I really had every intention. <laughs> the bed was so attractive. We kept a seat warm for you right there, too. Strike three. Impressive inning for Richards. Tires the Yankees in order. One, two, three. Three strikeouts. We're halfway through. Three nothing Yanks. Sportsbook. Right now, new customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Download the FanDuel app. Start making every moment more. Look at downtown Toronto. Beautiful skyline, great city. And Garrett Cole's having a good time so far. 12 up, 12 down as we go to the fifth inning. Cleanup hitter Teoscar Hernandez will start it off against the Yankee Ace. Off the glove of Cole, but right there, Cabrera. One away. I have a feeling that through that, this. What's that? Man, go ahead, Paul. No, I have a feeling. Where, you know, you're coming down to you know the the end of the year you got a couple starts left uh, I mean is it just two good outings or a number of pitches you want to get in before you get into the playoffs you know the whole thing with Cole tonight is is that you've got some room to maneuver because of the five days off that they now have mm -hmm. so that it's not like you know you need to sort of taper him down at the end of the season because he's got to start a game two days after the regular season ends and he's got almost a week so you need to, you know, that you have that extra time, that cushion. One and one on Chapman. You know, I was going to say that, you know, you get the feeling that, you know, Toronto is the favorite city of our, our producer, Troy Benjamin. He just really? gets a different look in his eye when we come to Toronto. Interesting. That same sparkle that Joe Namath got in his eye, Michael? Exactly. That's what he's yeah. talking about. That's exactly it? what I mean. <laughs> but Joe had that sparkle in every city. <laughs> Three and one on Chapman. Fly ball center field. Bader, two outs. Again, I mean, uh, the ball hit hard. It's not leaving the yard, but Garrett Cole, that's middle of the plate. Uh, that ball you usually can do something with, and 
know, Garrett Cole gets away with it a lot of times because it's 97 98. It's a little gun shy. That ball made a loud sound. You know, he hit mm -hmm. it a little too high. You can see Cole, his initial reaction was a little stunned. Tapia takes low. With that being said, Cole very sharp tonight and very determined. And a strike, one and one. Bottom of the fifth inning, Yankees lead 3 0. They got their runs in the first inning. Couldn't hold up, one and two. It's a little different body language from Garrett Cole that I'm picking up on is what I mean. Very determined, but also a little ticked off. Not happy about giving up those home runs. Talking about it, trying to figure it out. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. He ties Gidry for 248 strikeouts. Both of them now sit atop the Yankee leaderboard, single season strikeout leaders. Experience a fully electric Audi vehicle, your local Tri-State Audi dealer today, Ron Gidry has company. Indeed he does. Number 248 on the season, a beautifully executed knuckle curveball down and in. Get that ball. And there, head of the clubhouse, Robbie Kakuza has it, safe keeping. And they'll want the next one as well. Boy, when you tie Ron Guidry and anything in Yankee lore, you've tied one of the best. Special person, special pitcher, two-time world champion. Monifer Einstein scoreboard as we go to the sixth inning. And Gonzalez leads off against Richards and takes a strike. Richards faced four, retired all four, struck out the last three last inning. Gonzalez had a sack fly in the first, tap back to the mound in the third. 0-2. Oh wow, another good changeup from Richards. And Coney, it takes me back to a few nights ago we were talking and about you throwing your split finger and you said I mean even as great a pitcher as you were you say you never really got comfortable throwing your circle change up didn't work for you huh? swing and a miss four strikeouts in a row for Richards I could not just get the feel for it I, you know, I really couldn't I I had an injury to my pinky you know I have a crooked pinky when I mm -hmm. injured a bunting got drilled and you see that pitch and that fade and really the spin too on that Changeups have much higher spin rate, generally speaking, than split fingers do. So they can create a good tunneling, tunneling effect off of a two-seam fastball. Both of them look the same coming in on the same plane. But you really do kind of throw it off with your, your off the side of your hand a little bit. You kind of need your middle two fingers and your pinky a little bit as you get your index finger off of the baseball to throw that changeup. So Atley Hammerker was responsible for you not being able to throw a changeup. That's what you're saying. That's it exactly. Drilled me, shattered my, <laughs> shattered my pinky. Fly ball, right field. Oscar Hernandez puts it away for the second out here in the sixth. And here's Tim LaCastro. Yankees jumped out early, getting three runs in the first, and it's holding up. Judge, if two Yankees get on, we'll bat this inning. If not, he'll have to wait till the seventh. 
He's had three plate appearances tonight. 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. Still holding at 60. One and one. Two and one on LaCastro. You know, some people, you know, will just accept stats and go, well, if you bat a guy leadoff, he's going to see more at-bats. But when you know the guy who's batting leadoff and you're waiting for him to come up, you realize how often that leadoff spot comes up. It really gives you several more at-bats per year than you would if you batted anywhere else. But he's not batting here in the sixth. That one's popped up. Chapman's there. Yankees go down in order. Chapman has retired seven in a row. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Cole coming out for more. Roberto Clemente Award presented by Capital One, which recognizes players who best represent the game through positive contributions on and off the field. Vote today at MLB.com slash Clemente21. Now Rizzo and Carlos Mendoza talking to Laz Diaz. Really, uh, they're doing this manager thing. Danny Jansen leads off the sixth against Cole. Foul away. Bonifure Einstein Rizzo. scoreboard, 3 0 Yanks. Rizzo was an ex uh, Clemente Award winner. On that line. The 0 1. 0 1 2. And the pitch. One and two. Cole should get one more start after this. That would be in Texas. And then the Yankees have a, a nice little respite once the season's over before they have to play in the division series. Yankees will finish their season Wednesday, the fourth game of a four-game set against the Rangers in Arlington. Then come home. Thursday is an off day for baseball in case there's a game that has to be made up, though. And then the uh, the wild card, best of three, starts on Friday. Three games in a row in one city. Two and two on Jansen. Whit Merrifield is on deck. In the dirt. Three and two. No action. Three, two. Foul back. And why should there be? Pitch counts in good shape. Now it's just the 60th. We're in the uh, sixth inning. Yankees lead 3 0. So Nestor's his pitching coach. Playing around on the phone. Driven deep to left field. There it goes. See ya. First blemish against Cole. It's a home run in his 3 1 Yanks. Jansen's had some injuries this year, but he's put up a career high 14 home runs in limited time. And again, Garrett Cole with a slider that kind of hung out over the plate, ended up in the seats.
Kind of right to your point too, Polly, from before. Middle of the plate. Damage on a 3-2 pitch. You don't want to walk him. You get a perfect game going. You get a little too much of the plate, and then that, that happens. One and one. First base runner for the Blue Jays. Count one and two on Merrifield. 15 in a row retired at the start against Cole. And then this. Two and two. And the pitch. Lined in the right field, the base hit in front of La Castro. A back to back hitters going deep into the count and getting sliders out over the plate. Merrifield lines this one to right. Jansen lined it in the seats. Another breaking ball that just kind of sits there, Coney. Not a lot of break on it. Kind of like a hitter when you're late with your swing and you kind of get jammed or fouled off. The same thing with a slider. You're late with your release point and they kind of back up on you and sit there. One and over Bradley. Merrifield dives back. Blue Jays signed Bradley at the Red Sox released him, so he got signed on August 9th. Outstanding defender. He struggled offensively. But Cole's gone three and on. There's a strike. Springer is on deck. An important at bat right here for Garrett Cole to try to come back and get the nine hitter. Nobody out, man on first. You already gave up a homer. Top of the lineup ready to come. And he walks Bradley. Matt Blake will go out and talk with Cole. There's no fun in games here when you're dealing with Cole. They need Cole. He's their opening starter in the playoffs. So they're not going to send any of the players out there as de facto pitching coaches. This is Matt Blake. You know, Blake summed up Cole the other day, and I thought it was interesting. He said he's got unbelievable stuff, but sometimes we forget he's a human being and he's going to make mistakes, and sometimes the mistakes get to him. And we've seen that with him a lot, David. When things don't go exactly right, he does get frustrated. Yeah, just walk the nine hitter to the nine hole hitter here. Looking for trouble with Springer up, and now this really tough Blue Jay order, especially at the top. It's easy to lose a little bit of concentration. You give up the home run, you give up a single. 
Going to get tested right here. Springer is 0 for 2. Couldn't hold up. Goes around on the knuckle curve, 0 and 1. That's a smart pitch right there. We've talked so much about Springer loving to hunt that fastball first pitch. Here Cole starts him off with a knuckle curve. That one's lined to right field. LaCastro will make the play. Merrifield tags and goes to third. So Springer hit it well. But LaCastro ran it down. Now first and third, one man out. That fastball right there at 100 miles an hour. Springer has no problem putting the barrel on it, just lines it to right field. Good job by LaCastro to get it in, keep that double play in order. Still got a chance to get out of here if he can get the ball on the ground. Here's Bichette, ground ball to short, ground ball to first. Yankees a double play depth, first and third, one man out. Ah, uh, strike. 99 on the outside corner. He has not had much success against Cole, as you see. On deck, Guerrero. Merrifield at third, Bradley's at first. Good speed on the bases. 0-2 on Bichette. Good pitch there, he got that one in off the plate. I think this is a key for Garrett Cole. He missed with Springer earlier on the last at bat. You see, he beat him there. That's just in off the plate at 98. The one to Springer, he left on the middle and got away with it on the line drive to right. Still 0-2. Cole had retired the first 15 batters of the game. And then Jansen greeted him with a home run here to start the sixth inning. Merrifield then singled to right. Bradley with a walk. Springer with a line drive to right. First and third, one out. Hit too slowly for two. And they don't get anybody. Run scores, it's 3-2. As Bradley gets back to second. So Bichette with an infield single and an RBI, and the Yankees' lead is just one run. And once Donaldson gets gets over there and it gets by him, Peraza really has no chance. You see Donaldson kind of cut in front to his ball, but he didn't come up with it. Peraza did all he could. Bo Bichette, good enough speed. Clearly safe, and Peraza was going to get it. He was coming to get it, but he had to stop because Donaldson cut in front. Nice effort, though, to save that play by Peraza. Just not enough time. So here's Guerrero. Ty runs it second. Go ahead, runs it first. And that's a balk. That wasn't an inside move. That clearly was a balk. It's just classic indecision. He didn't like the pitch. Stopped halfway through. Now this crowd getting loud. Yankees play the infield back with second and third and one out. Ground ball ties the game. Foul away.
Frost getting up in a hurry, getting ready. You can see Garrett Cole that with that ball, he's caught up in the selection process. Which pitch to throw? And he's talked about that, including on the home runs he's given up this year, and kind of second guessing himself about the options he has, the decisions on which pitch to throw that he has to make. High drive, left field. It's in the ballpark. Hicks is there. And Bradley Jr. tags and scores. It's a sack fly by Guerrero. And it's a 3-3 game. Lucky he got this ball in just enough to kind of jam Guerrero to keep it in the ballpark. But all of a sudden, you see Guerrero just wanting to tie this game up. That's what you have right now, 3-3. Second now, two outs. Here's Teoscar Hernandez. Did he go? Yes, he did. 0 and 1. in the dirt so perfection coming into this inning has certainly been undone as Cole really labored a little misplay on an infield ball and his own balk also contributed to this inning Cabrera was sneaking in there at second for the pickoff, but Cole never looked at him. And then Hernandez called time at home. One and two. Five and zero for the Yanks. Three three and zero for the Blue Jays. One and two on to Oscar Hernandez. Still one and two. Out of those eighty-four pitches, forty four-seam fastballs. 21 knuckle curves. To me, that's been his best secondary pitch is a knuckle curve. Mm -hmm. The slider he gave up the home run on. This will be the 31st pitch of the inning, and it's bounced up there. Two and two. Yeah, after that two seamer in, Coney, you knew he was going to go either with the slider or the knuckle curve away right there. That just, uh, he bounced it. So Hernandez not even tempted for a swing and a miss. Well, his pitch count was in good shape heading into the uh, the six, and now he's at 85. Two two. Bounced again. He's bounced three pitches out of the last five. Three and two. Bichette leads off second. Skyed into center field. Bader's there to put it away, and that'll do it. But the Blue Jays tie the score. Three runs. 
three hits, one walk, now one man left. Well, thank you, Bob. Right here, it's also tied 3 3. Yankees and the Blue Jays, and Garrett Cole talking things over was Jose, Jose Trevino, one of his catchers. Cadillac scoreboard, Yankees 3-5-0, and Blue Jays 3-3-0. and And now, Tim Mesa, he of the 8-0 record, will take over. Third pitcher used by the Blue Jays, and Trevor Richards pitched very well. Retired all seven Yankees he faced. So we go to the seventh inning, it's gonna be 9-1-2. and two. Hicks, Judge, and Cabrera. The Blue Jays are thrilled. It looked like this game was going to get away from them early, early on, and they held in there. Were helped by some Yankees base running mistakes. And good relief pitching. Now they're right back in it. Hicks one for one with a walk. He turns around to the right side against the lefty Mesa. Hicks, Judge, and Cabrera. And there's a strike from Mesa. Roger Maris Jr. gets to a seat. He's been here the whole time. He doesn't want to miss this at bat. Patty Judge, Aaron Judge's mom, in her seat. She's also the president of the Aaron Judge Foundation. Works closely with the charitable arm and has a close eye on her son. And the 0-2. Served in the center field. Hicks has been much hotter of late, having his best stretch of the season. So he's two for two with a walk, and that'll bring up Aaron Judge. And they will change the baseballs. And for those tuning in from around the country to watch Judges at bat, welcome to the Yes Network, everybody. We're in the seventh inning, 3-3 game. Judges had three plate appearances. He walked and scored in the first inning. Fly ball to medium right in the second, and a ground ball to third in the fourth. So he has gone now 34 plate appearances since home run number 60, the one that tied Babe Ruth. Roger Maris patiently waiting on the other side of the record book. Hicks leads off first, and the pitch to Judge. Outside, 1-0. and And the pitch. Swing and a miss, 1-1. One and one. Crowd of 37,008 here at Rogers Center on this Wednesday evening. Dual purpose to see the Blue Jays try to clinch a postseason berth and watch Aaron Judge possibly hit number 61. And the 1-1. One -one. Keeping it away from him, 2-1. Seven straight games, and this one without a home run for Judge. His longest streak, nine straight games. 2-1. Fouled straight back, 2-2. Two two. He's right on that pitch. Probably the best pitch he's had to hit all night, a sinker, but it got a lot of the plate. You see Aaron Judge around the ball and under the ball just a bit. And the 2-2. Two -two. 
You know, the home plate umpire almost punched him out, but instead another full count. This is a pitch you see so often called on Aaron Judge and not a lot of other players, but not a pitch he can do anything with. Good take. Back to the full count. And the pitch. All the way. Came him out. Adam with another fastball. Sinker 95 miles an hour. Since his last home run, he has been walked 13 times. Four last night. No other Yankee walked. And then one in the first inning tonight. Throw over. He'd been very calm and collected, but you would think it's got to be weighing on his mind just a bit. He is the center of attention and sometimes uncomfortable in that role. And the 3 2 fouled away. Now he takes a walk. He usually doesn't do that. He stays anchored in that batter's box, but he takes a walk to clear his mind and reset. Judge back in. And the 3 2. Drill deep to left field. This could be it. See ya. He's done it. Number 61. He's been chasing history, and now he makes it. He and Roger Maris are tied with 61 home runs, the most anybody has ever hit in a single season in American League history. about you Coney but you know what we've seen all the tapes of Babe Ruth we've seen all the tapes and the footage of Roger Maris but now we've got a face we've got a guy that we can say you remember when Aaron Judge this has been such a great year and so much fun to watch number 61. Sixty one years ago in 1961 Roger Maris hit 61 home runs that record in the American League is held up through all these years and 61 years later Aaron Judge has tied it and you can see a sense of joy and relief on his face it was wearing on him just a bit but with that one swing he makes history and the hug between Roger Maris Jr. And Aaron Judge's mom connects all the dots to the generations. Oh, and by the way, the Yankees take a 5-3 lead on this swing. That ball up in the strike zone, and a lot of times as a hitter, you've seen him fouling a lot of ball balls off. Not this one. Had a little top spin on it, and you never see 
emotion from Aaron, uh, from Aaron Judge. Well, you did here. What a monkey off his back. And what a swing for the ages. Well, Tim Mesa will now forever be on the other side of history with Tracy Stallard. After he served up this pitch, mom knew it. Roger Maris Jr. knew it. And they are united in history around the magical, mystical number 61. This was one of his line drive specials, not the high arching home run, but this dugout was waiting and they knew. He is loved in that dugout, in that clubhouse for his unselfishness. He is the star of this team. He doesn't act like it, but he has done something that only one other man in American history has ever, American League history has ever done. Hit 61 home runs. So number 99 catches number nine here in Toronto. Those fans came so close it ended up landing over the fence untouched by a fan. And the Yankee bench euphoric over their teammate making history. In 3.8 seconds. 61 years of history. Tied. And an absolute bullet at 117 miles an hour off of Aaron Judge's bat. Wow. And maybe that little walk around the batter's box cleared his head. That's not something that he usually does. And then he gets in and he hits the home run. Here's Jimmy Garcia. And a foul ball by Donaldson. And a great classy gesture by a, a pro Blue Jay crowd. They all stood up and gave Judge an ovation. And he got his proper dues here in Toronto. Those two fans that reached over the fence, they came that close to possibly hitting the lottery. But that one into the Blue Jays bullpen. A 1 2. Swing and a miss. Donaldson down on strikes. This was so great. There has to be mixed feelings for Roger Maris Jr. His dad had held that record that many people consider the record for single season home runs for 61 years and give him credit. He was here every step of the way throughout the homestand and these three games in Toronto. Class personified. That one's chopped to short and it's booted by Bichette as Peraza reaches. How about that smile? Thanks, Mom. And 
a strike to Bader. Well, in his 34th plate appearance after hitting number 60, he joins Roger Maris at 61. A season for the ages, according to Aaron Boone. Boy, is he right. One and one. Well, Coney, you've played with some unbelievable talented players in your career. I can say the same. I don't remember anybody ever comparing or coming close to what he has done for this team in one year. One and two. Roger Maris had Mickey Mantle. Aaron Judge carried this team this year. And he hasn't had many tack on home runs. You know, Yankees tied at three. That's a home run that gives them the lead. We've seen a lot of that this year. So with the two run home run, he now has 130 runs batted in as well. It's hard to wrap your mind around the monster season and the numbers that he's put up. It just. You do a double take when you look at his his numbers. Oh, Bader almost got hit. Goes to the backstop, allowing Peraza to go to second. Mm. Still an electric buzz in this crowd. Trying to process what they just witnessed. Up the middle and a base hit past the diving Merrifield. Peraza will score. The ball gets by Bradley. And Bader will go to second with an RBI single, an E8, and a 6-3 Yankee lead. An impressive at bat for Bader. Unbelievable after being knocked down, lining one up the middle. Cheers. A man who hit 59 home runs just toasted a man who has 61. And there's still more season to go. I think it was Meredith who asked Stanton how he dealt with the pressure of sitting on 59. And he had a great answer. He said, I hit 59. That's how I dealt with it. <laughs> the relief is palpable. One and one on Gonzalez. One and two. Kiss from mom.
from tucking him in as a baby to watching him enter baseball immortality. Pretty nice trip so far. Out the way. Thirty years old, drafted by the Yankees, up through the Yankee system, and has put together one of the great seasons you will ever see. Sixty-one home runs, sixty-one years after Maris did it. Two and two. Can't help but think about the baseball gods with those kind of numbers that you just said, Michael. Wearing number 99 on his back. Popped up. Chapman on the run, slides and makes the play to end the inning. But the seventh inning here on this Wednesday evening will be remembered forever. In the 121 year history of the American League, only two men have ever hit 61 home runs in a season. That guy's dad, that woman's son. Aaron Judge enters the history books with a bang, 61. Well, thank you guys, and here it is, the Honda home run leaders, and these are the American League single season all-time leaders. Judge is tied with Maris, and Babe Ruth is second with 60. Pretty amazing moment, and we're glad that you could share it with us. Cole comes out to pitch the seventh, and he deals low and away to Chapman. How about Judge picking up Cole after that rough inning? Yeah, all of a sudden, right? That's a good teammate. It must be nice to be able to tell your pitcher, don't worry about it, I'll hit 61, everybody will forget. I got you. Aaron Judge has had everybody's backs this year. So it was Tom Zachary who gave up number 60 to Babe Ruth. Tracy Stallard gave up number 61 to Roger Maris and Tim Meza Gives up 61 to Aaron Judge. And now the phone off the hook. Rounded to short, Peraza, and a nice scoop by Marwin to get Chapman. Now here's the home run. And it's caught by the bullpen coach, Matt Bushman. And the Yankees have gotten the ball for him. And Matt Bushman um, is the husband of Sarah Walsh of Fox in the NFL Network. And he just caught the historic home run ball. That's going to do it for Garrett Cole. The Yankees will go to the bullpen. Cole leaves up 6-3. It's all fun and games in the dugout. And one more look at number 61. An absolute laser show. Don't blink, because it got out in a hurry. 3.8 seconds to be precise. Before he even got halfway to first base, it was gone. What a shot that was. You saw the fans coming on their feet in slow motion. 
What a great shot. Wonder if he's even feeling the ground there. You could float on 61. Also think of your mother running around the bases, pointing. Uh, what a monkey off his back. Oh. He kissed it goodbye, Mom. Britain deals to Tapia a ball. Want to know? Grounded to first. Tappy is out, two away. How about this? The captain after his hit, yes, with three exclamation points. Derek's been fibbing, saying, I don't get yes. I guess he does. That's a conversation only those two men can have. It's 120 home runs in two seasons right there. <laughs> Sarah Walsh, who he said is Matt Bushman's wife, just tweeted out, bad news is I'm down here in Florida battling a hurricane, but the good news is I can announce my retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mom. Very nice. That cell phone better be 100% charged. She's going to have a lot of calls tonight. The pure emotion on her face is just priceless. 3 and 0 on Jansen. And a strike 3 and 1. As Jansen walks, you know, the amazing thing about what Judge has done, and we talked about this earlier, he stayed true to what got him the 60 home runs throughout the next however many at bats. So that came on the um, the 35th plate appearance since, since uh, home run number 60. He never expanded the zone, never chased anything, never became about him. He stayed within himself and what got him there in order to keep the team on the winning track. So. Got to give him credit for that. That's a great point. That's why he's also chasing the triple crown because of that discipline that you just described, Michael. One and oh. Triple crown, triple slash line, 61 homers. Any way you want to slice it. We have witnessed and are continuing to witness one of the greatest offensive seasons in the history of baseball. Two and oh. And a triple crown watch. He's still in first place batting average. Arises behind him. Bogarts has dropped the 309. Has a great lead, obviously, in home runs and RBIs. People were talking about the baseballs. Not traveling as far this year, Paul. The, the ball that dies. 
Yeah, it doesn't die off this bad, does it? For Aaron Judge, every ball is the one that flies. Two straight walks by Britton, who's still trying to find it, coming off the IL. Kind of expedited through a recovery from Tommy John surgery. Got the first out against Tapia, but has walked Jansen and Merrifield. This Colorado telecast presented by authority of the New York Yankees and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the New York Yankees. So Alejandro Kirk will pinch hit for Jackie Bradley Jr. And here comes Aaron Boone. As he will go to the bullpen. So Britain faces the requisite three. And with Kirk coming up, they go to the bullpen. Second outing for Britain off the IL. Yankees lead 6-3, and Aaron Judge is hit a 61st. Drill deep to left field. This could be it. See ya. He's done it. Number 61. He's been chasing history, and now he makes it. He and Roger Maris are tied with 61 home runs, the most anybody has ever hit in a single season in American League history. Well, that was it. Number 61 for Aaron Judge. Still talking about it. Still all smiles with Giancarlo Stanton. It took seven games plus, but he's done it. And now he still has seven games after this one to break the record and make the record almost unreachable. Scott Efros comes on in relief of Britain. And Anthony Rizzo could say he was the manager on the day that Judge tied Roger Maris. Pretty good way to start your resume as a manager, huh, Michael? Not too bad. Not too bad. I don't know how you go up from that. <laughs> oh, and one. There's a good pitch, one and two. Get the feeling that Aaron Boone has a lot of confidence in Scott Efros. Just about in any role. Was using him to close games before he went on the IL. Well, he's clearly right in the middle of the circle of trust and is going to be relied on. Be a fly in the wall. What are they talking about? And Judge is definitely getting another at bat. Have two more innings to go. They're at the sixth spot in the order. So even if they go down one, two, three, and the eighth, Judge is coming up in the ninth.
First and second, two outs. 3-2. Ground ball to Cabrera. And that'll do it here in the seventh as Efros gets the big out. Blue Jays strand two. Yankees baseball on yes is brought to you in part by Northwell, who reminds you it doesn't kill to ask about unlocked guns. Get tips for asking at northwell.edu slash lock guns. By Bigelow, the official hot tea of the Yankees. And by FanDuel Sportsbook, make every moment more. Well, an entire Yankee universe able to exhale after that one swing. Mesa knew it, Judge knew it, and if you're watching at home, you knew it as well. Seven games plus of holding your breath, and finally, Aaron Judge does what we knew he would do, hit his 61st home run, standing alongside Roger Maris in the record books. Pretty special. Adam Simber comes on. And Kyle Higashioka will lead off. Zimmer takes over in center. Chop foul. I was thinking about walking all over you on that call. You should have. Let's just walk. <laughs> then we'd be united forever. I was going to Howard Cosell you. <laughs> and Aaron Scott. Judge. <laughs> Coney, I've done it before. They just cut my mic off. I was I was talking. I was calling. They just called, they just turned me off. I'm just stunned. I am just stunned. It happened <laughs> so fast. Look at your face, David. I'm just absolutely stunned <laughs> in the moment. I can't believe what I just saw. <laughs> it's amazing, though, because you could say that about his whole season. It's not just that one swing. It's the compilation of the 61. And I mean, just what a run. Uh, I think it was said best by his manager. This is a season for the ages, and we're all just witness. Did he go? Yes, he did. Higashioka down on strikes. Hey, fans, go to at Yes Network on Twitter and vote for the Montefiore Einstein Player of the Week. Is it number one, Aaron Judge? Should I go further? Number two, Glaber Torres. Number three, Oswaldo Cabrera. Grounded to short. Bichette off balance throw against the speeding LaCastro. Two away. Well, at the bat, I didn't think he had a shot. Anytime you're a shortstop and you got to go to your right with LaCastro running, chances are you're not going to get him, but a great play by Bichette to get rid of that ball. So here is Aaron Hicks. He will always say he was on base when Aaron Judge hit the 61st home run. Now he could be on base for the 62nd home run. Lined into center field. It's a base hit for Hicks, his third hit of the night, and that does give Judge an at bat here in the eighth inning. Well, fresh off of 61. 
Aaron Judge steps into the batter's box. With 61 a weight off his shoulders, will now this become a flood where he hits a couple? Well, the pressure is somewhat off, but obviously he's looking to break the record. Hit sharply to short. Bichette there. They get the force, and uh, that will do it here in the eighth. No run to hit. One man left. We go to the bottom of the eighth. 6 3 Yanks. I wonder what it is, Paul. Yeah, this is a shocker in the seventh inning. We've been waiting. Number 61. Yeah, right, Michael. I said it. 61. Aaron Judge. That is your play of the game. I can watch it over and over again. Marison Judge united at 61. Hyundai scoreboard, bottom of the eighth inning, 6 3, Yankees lead. And it'll be the top of the Blue Jays' order against Clark Schmidt. One and oh. Swing and a miss. One and two. You know, a sneaky good move by Aaron Boone here to get Clark Schmidt right back in here after he gave up the walk-off hit in game one. Facing the top of the order. Two and two. Go back to last inning, Coney. I thought, you know, even with Zach Britton in trouble, here you have Clinch, Judge got his home run. Sure, you want to win every game, but you also want to put Efros in a position, in a big position, to see how these guys are going to do. He gets out of the inning. That's a check mark for Ef Efros going ahead because uh, we've talked about the question marks in the bullpen. And a walk to start out the eighth inning. Hey, a quick programming note for you. On Friday, the Yankees will face Baltimore when they start their last home series of the regular season. And you can watch the action on Prime Video Yankees on the Yes Network. Coverage begins at 6.30, which you can watch here on Yes or live by streaming through Prime Video. Runner on first, nobody out here is Bo Bichette. One and oh. Nice play by Peraza. The throw to first, not in time. Bichette beats it out. First and second for the Blue Jays. Nobody out. Going to show off a little range here as he goes deep in the hole and gets it. Surprised he didn't take a shot at second base. Mm -hmm. I think the play there, the, the play there is to go to second. That's an awful hard play to make that throw. 
there with Bo Bichette running and his speed obviously was a great play to get to that ball but you know to come across to second base your only chance to get an out. Here's Guerrero. Oh, what a play there by Higashioka saving a wild pitch, 1-0. and oh. Pure athleticism. First and second, nobody out. Yankees six, Blue Jays three, bottom of the eighth inning. And a strike. One on Guerrero. Guerrero 0 for 2 with a sack fly. Well, the Blue Jays see on the scoreboard that Boston has beaten Baltimore 3 to 1. So if the Blue Jays could come back and win this, they clinch a playoff spot because their magic number was 2 over the Orioles. So a lot on the line for Toronto. 2 1. Grounded up the middle. There's one. And there's two. 4-4-3 four, four, double play started by Cabrera as Springer moves to third. What well, is the easiest way to, to, to not make a throw? But I didn't know once he caught this ball. Look, he's four or five steps back. He's got to come across. And Vlad, we've seen when he wants to run, he can't get down the line. But a good double play ball and a good job by Cabrera. Pretty nice diving catch by Marwin. Marwin with the belly flop on the back end. <laughs> Here's Teoscar Hernandez. And there's a strike. Springer's on third now with two outs. Bottom of the eighth inning, 6-3 Yankees. One and one. Another backhand stab by Higashioka. It's never been tougher, tougher to catch in the major leagues. It's kind of sweeping sliders, hard to get to. Three and one on Hernandez with Chapman on deck. And a couple of those, Coney, where he went to block him in a proper catcher's position and in the middle of his movement figured out he couldn't get there and just turned his glove the other way and picked it. I mean, that is, I'm, you just don't understand. What do you have? Le less than half a second right there to make that decision. Exactly. Tremendous play behind the plate by Higashioka. 
three and two. And here's the payoff. Swing and a miss, struck him out. So Schmidt works back from first and second, nobody out, gets a double play, strikes out Hernandez, and we go to the ninth, 6-3 Yanks. Yes, and win a record-breaking pick and play jackpot on the Yes app. Correctly answer five questions about the game when 99 will hit number 62 and you could win up to $62,000. The game is free to play and is open now, so download the Yes app, tap on the Play tab, and get ready to watch history and win big. See official rules for details. Anthony Rizzo taking this seriously. Seeing where he's in the batting order, who's coming up, wearing the watch that a manager has to wear as we go to the ninth inning. Cabrera will lead it off. Simber still in there. Foul back. Owen two. Lined in the left center field, it is a base hit. Cutting over is Tapia. Heading to second is Cabrera. The throw not in time. It gets away. Cabrera will stay right there as he picks up a double open the ninth. Boy, I love his approach right now. If the ball's away, he'll hit it away. The ball up and away. As a left-handed hitter to stay on top of that, he's got good speed. Turns this into a double. Is every single day you just love what you're seeing from Cabrera. Seems like he just got here, and that was already his 132nd at bat this year. We've talked a lot about, uh, you know, diversity in the lineup. We've mentioned this numerous times. And, you know, you have Judge, you have Stanton, you have Rizzo, now Cabrera. You add a, a, a little a little bit of diversity to your lineup as far as a guy that hits the ball the other way, a guy can run, a guy can score runs, not a, a, your, your typical power hitter. And I think it's, you know, as you look back, those lineups much harder to pitch to than eight or nine dead power hitters. Two and one. Donaldson struck out three times tonight. He did have an RBI single in the first, so one for four. Three and one on the Yankee third baseman batting third tonight. Chapman is up the pitch tonight. Scott the other way, long run for Hernandez, but it's about five, six rows back. Yeah. 
And that plunks Donaldson. He'll take first. And taking a long time to get to first. Let's see if it gets him on the pad. And it kind of ricocheted down. So you, know, you never want to show the pitcher that it hurt. So you take your time to get down there. But that pad does take a lot of the pain away. Tap back to the mound. Simber fires to first to just get Peraza, and the runners move up. That worked just as good as a bunt right here, the old swinging bunt where you get two guys over. I think he's in line to try to add tack on here and try to put this game away. Well, with runners on second and third, the Blue Jays have to bring the infield in for Harrison Bader. His first couple of hits for the Yankees that drove in runs happen to be with the infield in. Squeeze the ground ball through each time. And Peraza can run. He got down the line there. Four point three eight. Home to first. Pretty quick for a right handed batter. He goes around. Speed in the 90th percentile as graded by StatCast. Got a nice little combination of some pop in his bat, some good defense, and some speed. Right back to Simber. He'll come home. He throws the ball away. Cabrera scores. Here comes Donaldson. He'll score. Moving to second is Bader. And the Yankees lead 8 3. Well, Simber launched it to the screen and was so upset that he forgot to cover home plate. Donaldson had a good read and just kept coming around. Nobody at home. Right there, he puts his head down, doesn't know what to do. Donaldson picks that up. I'll take that run. Contact play is on. Oswaldo does not hesitate. Cut. Simber off guard a little bit there. Looked like he was surprised. Always challenge a sidearm pitcher. They have trouble throwing to the bases, generally speaking. Just about every sidewinder I've seen. Somebody to be challenged. He throws the ball away, doesn't cover home. He gets taken out. They go to the bullpen again. Yankees up by five here in the ninth. We'll collide as the Yankees make their final push to the playoffs, and the Brooklyn Nets tip off a new campaign. All eyes will be on yes as Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and Ben Simmons headline one of the most exciting teams in the NBA. This team could win a championship. Those guys stay healthy. They play a lot of games. They are that good. The first preseason game is Monday at 730 against the Philadelphia 76ers streaming live on the Yes app. Well, the Yankees lead 8-3 and Aaron Judge has tied Roger Maris with a seventh inning two run home run. Home run number 61 for Aaron Judge. You say Kikuchi has been demoted from starter into the bullpen. He comes on to face Marwin Gonzalez. Runner at second, one man out. Ground it to short. Throw to first. Two away. Well, fans, you're not going to want to miss tonight's WB Mason Yankees postgame for highlights, analysis, and reaction from tonight's series finale with the Blue Jays and Aaron Judge's 61st home run, plus Aaron Boone on the manager's report. Maybe it should be Anthony Rizzo. And a look ahead to the series with the Orioles.
Here's Kyle Higashioka. One and one. Big cut one and two. Higashioka with a career high tying three hits yesterday. He's 0 for 4 tonight. Top of the ninth inning, 8 11 and 0 Yanks, 3 4 and 2 for the Blue Jays. Two and two. Swing and a miss, Higashioka down on strikes. Yankees get two runs, one hit, one big error, and one man left. Player of the game. I wonder who it could be. Aaron Judge, another great at bat, foul off some tough pitches, got one he can handle, and right into the history books. Number 61. And still counting. And the reaction from the bench tells it all. Genuine happiness for, by all of them. That's how well respected he is. And then a mom's love and admiration. She knew it. And then this says it all, this hug. Unless the Blue Jays rally. Well, Judge has a chance to hit number 62 this weekend against the Orioles in Yankee Stadium. Araldis Chapman takes over. Not a save situation with a five run lead. He'll face Chapman, Tapia, and Jansen. One and oh. Chapman 0 for 3 tonight. The batter Chapman, the pitcher Chapman, those are his numbers. One and one. And the pitch. 2-1. Yankees win the American League East last night. Aaron Boone asked Aaron Judge, hey, what do you want? You want a day off? You want to, you know, or do you want to play? Aaron Judge made a wise decision. <laughs> and I'll That's have a day off tomorrow. That. You have the you go back to 1941 kind of the same situation that was the famous day where Ted Williams went into the last day of the season hitting 399.5 and he was asked you know do you do you want to play today well he decided to play threw up a bunch of hits and it ended up hitting well over 400 
So there you go. Something is up with uh, Brian Onora. He's being tended to near the Blue Jays dugout. It's like he was coughing. And they're giving him some water. And the other umpires are coming in to see what's going on. He says he's okay. Just needed some water. Not an easy job. There's a strike. Chapman making Chapman wait. They have Chapman over these last seven games in this one dominates that that closes role in the postseason is certainly open but he's had a hard time throwing strikes consistently throws one there strike three Chapman down looking well, we've talked about it in the past Coney when he is able to get ahead and then go to a split finger I mean that's almost like a fork ball that didn't have a lot of spin on it. Nasty pitch. Clearly Chapman waiting to get that pitch. That's the one he wanted. Shook off a couple of times and got to it. And a strike to Tapia. And the 0 1 pitch. 0 1 2. And the 0 2. Just got a piece to stay alive. Well, there's a reason why he's in this game because Aaron Boone, as you said, Michael, is kind of looking over everybody right now. Trying to piece this bullpen together, see who fits where. One thing about Aroldis Chapman is, is that he likes to call his own game. We've seen this a lot. He'll shake off and just wait until he gets the pitch he wants to throw. Strike three, Tapia down looking, two away. Well, that's a tough at bat for a lefty right there. He saw a slider away, middle of the count, then a splitter, and then 101 on the inside corner. Off the heel of the glove of Higgy.
That'll get your attention. <laughs> so there's Danny Jansen. He broke up the five inning perfect game of Cole with a home run. He's one for two with a walk. Strike. And the 0 1. One strike away. Eleven pitches, nine strikes from a Roldis Chapman. And the pitch stays alive. Whole different ball game if he can control the strike zone. Well, Boone has said. Closer by committee in the postseason, but somebody could grab that by the throat over these last seven games. Right back to Chapman, a clean ninth inning. He retires the Blue Jays in order one, two, three. Yankees win eight, three. Aaron Judge in the history books, right alongside Roger Maris with 61 home runs. And the Yankees take two out of three here in Toronto. And then Brian O'Nora gives his congratulations to Judge as well. And he gives him the lineup card to keep as a memento for this momentous moment. Pretty neat. Start keeping everything. It's been that kind of year. He's going to get the baseball back because it didn't go into the stands. It went into the Blue Jays bullpen. It was returned to the Yankees, so Judge has that. He has number 60 as well. Anthony Rizzo has his first managerial victory, although Aaron Boone will get it officially. All things good in Yankee Universe, and even Cole picks up a victory despite a shaky sixth inning. We've got a lot of good things happened uh, in Toronto here. You clinched the American League East. Aaron Judge hits a monumental home run, number 61. And now, Michael, he sets it up to possibly break that record in Yankee Stadium come Friday night. Well, he's got three games starting Friday night, then Saturday and Sunday at the stadium against the Baltimore Orioles. So the Yankees win this one 8 to 3, 8 11 and 0, beating 3, 4, and 2. And Meredith Morakovitz is with the record tire right there on the field. Thanks, Michael. Aaron, you made history with one swing of the bat, blasting your 61st home run of the season, tying the American League single season record set by Roger Maris in 1961. Can you take me through that historic seventh inning at bat? You know, we'll start off with Hicks in front of me. You know, I'm working a great at bat, getting on base. And, um, you know, the inning before, the Blue Jays put three runs to tie the game, you know, so I was just trying to go up there and, you know, try to start a rally, get something going, you know, and you know, luckily I was able to battle off a couple tough pitches and finally got one, you know, not over the heart of the plate and he was able to put a good swing on it. What's going through your mind as you're rounding the bases there and you know that you tied the record? Well, I was hoping it got over the fence. I didn't know at first. You know, I didn't want to, you know, be standing at home plate when it hits the wall. And um, But, you know, it's, it's, it's an incredible honor and, you know, there was, there was a lot of emotions. You know, it took me a little longer than I wanted to, but, uh, you know, getting a chance to add two runs to the board. You know, how about Gary get, a, get another win? Um, you know, it's, this is something pretty special. Hey, you mentioned the weight. You typically dig in in the batter's box, but right before you hit that pitch, you stepped out and kind of collected yourself. What made you step out in that situation? Oh, well, I felt a pitch off, and I actually liked the way the swing felt. So I was kind of like, hey, like, Tried to, I tried to soak in the moment about what that swing felt like, what the what the moment felt like, so that I could try to go out there and repeat it again, and it, it worked out. You've been a team first guy all the way. You're beloved in that clubhouse because of it. What did it mean to you to have your teammates come out of the dugout and congratulate you on your moment? Uh, I was I was pretty cool. I wasn't expecting it. You know, you never know what's going to happen, what what guys are going to do, but you know, seeing the love from my teammates, you know, who I you know show up to work every single day to 
you know, I do what I do for them, you know, and, you know, being able to share that moment with them and, you know, do it up here in a win, it's, uh, it's tough to describe right now. You acknowledged your mom, Patty. She's been with you the entire way. Just what has her support and your family's support meant to you this season? Oh, it, it's been incredible. You know, I'm, I'm nothing without my family. Um, it's, you know, they, they mean the world to me. You know, they're the reason why I'm here, the reason why I'm the person that I am. And, um, you know, getting to share this, you know, moment with my mom and also trying to give a, a little nod to, you know, Roger Merritt Jr. It was, uh, it means a lot that he, he shows up here too and um, looking forward to taking it back home. As you've chased 61, you've appeared so calm, collected in the batter's box. Were you as calm as you looked? Yeah, you know, we're, I'm, I'm playing a kid's game. I, I love this. I love these moments, and especially a moment like that where it's a 3-3 game. You got a chance to, you know, get, get a guy in scoring position or drive a guy in. You know, that's, those are the moments you live for. So I was just trying to soak it in and just go out there and do my job. Congratulations, Aaron. Thank you. A moment in baseball history Yankees fans will never forget, Michael. For sure, Meredith, here's the swing that sent the ball over the left field wall into the Blue Jay bullpen and into the history books as well. Tim Mazer knew it. Well, Judge wasn't sure, but the verdict was home run number 61. Now he is sitting with Roger Maris with that magical, mystical number that has lasted for 61 years. Congratulations to Aaron Judge.